right, according to the AARP, um, which anybody can join, right? Wait, that's, Michael, next week, let's talk about that. D discounts that we're missing out on. <laughs> for the AARP, for that sure. And Wait. some others. I'm sure some others out there that right. we should be taking advantage of. Uh, but this is, this is big. Uh, $28 billion uh, criminals take, steal. Mm from senior citizens. Much of that money is never recovered and could cause big problems for elderly people on fixed incomes. So financial instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation has three red flags to watch for that could be signs that your senior is being targeted by a scammer. Well, so, There's so many ways they're, they're approaching too, right? There These are scammers. lots of ways. And really, so one of the words you use is really interesting, criminals. People, when people think of this, they think of, you know, the person sitting behind, they, they show the graphic of the person behind the keyboard with the, with the mask over their face. What's shocking is that about 75% of financial elder fraud is done by caregivers, families, and friends. Mm. It is well over half. So of that $28 billion number, roughly $20 billion is caregivers, family, and friends. It what is that unbelievable. Look like, a caregiver is there and they write themselves a check they're or something? They're writing a check, they're paying their own bills, they're borrowing money with the intention of paying it back, they're never paying it back, they're just straight out stealing from them. You know, or even family. Family saying, you know, I'm driving mom, dad, aunts, uncles, whoever, back and forth to doctors, I'm paying for the gas, I'm paying for the food, so I'll grab some money out of their account. That's how it starts. Then all of a sudden they're grabbing more and more and more. The amount of fraud that happens just with family, friends, and caregivers is unbelievable. So it's not just mm -hmm. criminals, that, that, that's an issue, don't get me wrong, but it's also people who, you know, the rest of the family or friends would never expect it. And usually when you realize that it's too late and it's been so far gone for, for a long time. For sure, you know, if, if, you know, trying to untangle, well, when did the fraud start? When did they stop? When did they stop helping mom and dad and start helping themselves? When did that happen? How much was it? It's really, really challenging to untangle. What so, do you look for? How do you know? So number one, you know, if mom and dad start to become confused, that's, that's an early sign. But a big sign is changing financial, financial documents. If all of a sudden financial powers of attorney start changing or beneficiaries on accounts start changing, you know, the person who helps out mom or dad, all of a sudden they, you see their name pop up on an account as a joint account holder or a beneficiary, that's a huge red flag. So making sure bene, uh, documents aren't changing and banking habits. If all of a sudden mom and dad are taking cash out of the bank, Bank. You know, cash is very hard, if not impossible, to trace. Once that cash gets pulled out of the bank, you have no clue where it's going. There's no mm. paper trail. And so if, if they're taking big chunks of cash out of the bank, that's a huge red flag as well. What? Who should be given access to these financial accounts? And in other words, how do you keep under wraps all the, the passwords and the financial accounts when you are, when you have elder parents who need some assistance, I mean, how do you keep that stuff private and protected? So you've got to have a circle of trust. And again, a broken record here, but it comes down to planning, planning ahead of time. There's got to be a circle of trust or a team in place, whether it's family, friends, very close-knit, trusted people, because if there isn't that close-knit group of people in place ahead of time, how do you find it on the back end? Who do you trust on the back end? It also, we do stories on it all the time. Um, it is very easy for somebody who maybe a good caregiver or a good son or daughter, whatever, niece or nephew to say, you know, I've done a lot for mom this month. I'm going to take a little extra to pay for it. It can become quickly justified. Mm -hmm. And that's how it just starts adding up, right? And that's how it starts to snowball. And that's when all of a sudden, you know, half of the account is gone and people are scrambling saying, how could this have happened? Right. And the other person says, well, you know, gets defensive, starts hiding, starts lying. It can get really, really ugly. I got about 30 seconds left. Um, you guys have a big event coming up. You have a walk at the Detroit Zoo you're part of? Yeah. So last hour we talked about cognitive decline. So we've the Retirement Education Foundation has partnered with the Alzheimer's Association. We're taking part in their walk to end Alzheimer's at the Detroit Zoo, November, November 2nd. They've got over 400 teams, over 2,000 walkers. That's so awesome. if you're looking for plans Saturday morning, November 2nd, come out and join us. And you'll see Michael. Yeah, yeah you will. <laughs> that is so important, Michael, and that's, that's a great event, and it's also a great way just to uh, 
do something for something that affects raise awareness, millions raise of some funds, yeah. caregivers and families. That's just it's so difficult. There's a bunch of uh, educational information to uh, Retirement Education Foundation, refedu.org. Nailed it. Look at that. <laughs> Come on. We got it. Refedu.org.